Good morning, my soccer universe. You read the headline. I mean, there's only one way, one place to start uh, naturally, but I don't want to start actually there. I want to quickly go to the city Schalke game, which, yeah, uh, what can we say? It is 7 0, uh, two goals by Aguero. It took them actually quite some time. I mean, uh, I think the penalty was in the 35th. Aguero then quickly thereafter, I think 30, 41st makes it 2-0 and uh, they even make it 3-0 before halftime and uh, Sané, uh, who had done an incredible game. I mean, he assisted three more goals and it ends 7-0 for uh, City against Schalke. I don't want to read too much into the result, honestly, because Schalke is not a good team this year. They're simply not. And um, it's not the first time that a German team gets absolutely smacked by a um, Guardiola coach team. I am, I think Leverkusen got uh, Barcelona completely demolished. And you know, there have been more instances like these, and then in the end, the team that uh, makes that much uh, goes doesn't go on to win the whole thing. So, you know, uh, always take these results with a whole lot of salt. That's all I want to say on that game. I can understand that Manchester City is in the conversation about uh, favorite of the Champions League. I don't quite un I understand why they are top favorites, but okay. They probably have the deepest squad, so yes, and they have the supposedly best coach. Um, to me, they're they're not personally. I still would say Barcelona, although they still have to make it to the next round. And uh, yeah, there are other teams that I think Manchester City could have problems with. But I understand they're in the conversation, and we'll leave it at that. But uh, I think everyone, and you know, even my headline, and I'm gonna spend all the rest of the video talking about the other game. A, because I watched it. From the other one, I just saw seven highlights, and those were seven goals. Uh, rather anticlimactic. Uh, the only other, the last thing I wanna say is, and I said it in the post uh, yesterday, I don't understand why Schalke. Well, maybe I do understand a little bit because we had blue versus blue uh, in Gelsenkirchen, but I think it worked fine. Uh, so I honestly don't understand why Schalke had to play in the neon kits uh, at City. Just, I think light blue versus dark blue works just fine. And the same game can be said for the other game, and now we're finally at Juventus against Atletico Madrid. I think both games, both teams could play easily in their uh, home kits. Yes, there will be a slight white clash um, on the front, but the Atletico uh, shirt is mostly red on the back, Juve shirt is mostly white on the back. I think it will work fine, and even though Atletico Madrid's home shirt is one of the worst out there, I really dislike that one. Yes, it passes. Uh, the only genius about it is if you look at it from a distance, it passes the smell test. But this, uh, where the stripes change, uh, I really hate it. I really hate this kit. Um, so yeah, it's it's just awful. But uh, the kit they were wearing yesterday is honestly not much better. I mean, this uh, aqua green with yellow and then they wear the home socks with that one uh, which uh, if you watch the game you don't realize but if you look at it closer uh, at first when you see a close-up of an entire player it looks absolutely awkward because it, uh, there's no matching color I also don't understand they usually play with uh, orangey yellow socks uh, in that kit that would have worked too I'm sorry uh, and if Tottenham can get uh, custom socks for the weekend I think Atleti would deserve that too. I, I really don't get why they were using the home songs there, but enough of that. The game was a super interesting and in many ways super exciting one, except there was only one team playing and that was Juventus. And we finally got the performance of Juventus that we wanted to see for the longest of times. Uh, right off the bat, they're attacking Atletico and even got a goal, but it was rightfully ruled out. I mean, Ronaldo clearly gets into the 
face of Oblak to get out the ball that then Chiellini uh, smashes in. Yes, I fully understand that this was uh, uh, not given. And then actually the game quieted down. I mean, this was really the first five, five minutes were frantic and the game quieted down. You have to give it also to the crowd. I mean, Juventus Stadium is not uh, known for the good atmosphere and now with fan protests even more so. But yesterday, that place was rocking. Absolutely rocking and behind the team. And I also gotta say, the ref remained calm despite the atmosphere. And this is saying a whole lot. The referee was absolutely great yesterday. Uh, letting the game run, but not getting letting get out, out of hand. This was a masterclass in referee. We don't have to talk about the referee. This was the only VAR decision. I think everything else was going the right way. Even if Juventus, and uh, they really tried to get every little edge. And I understand, when you're protesting a, a decision, you know that you're not gonna overturn the decision right there. But you might get the edge in the next decision. This is very much an Italian way of thinking. Um, so yeah, Juventus overdid it, uh, in my opinion, a little bit, uh, which they necessarily didn't need to do. Uh, in the first half, it was a game of patience for Juventus, uh, uh, simple from a technical point of view already. Because uh, when you looked, Atletico was defending with at least eight men, er, eight, eight men around their own box. Uh, and probably being too tight. They had the majority in the middle of the park where I think they so expected Juventus to be more dangerous. That they had very well under, uh, under control, but they totally left the sides unprotected. And the first half, it was at first Matuidi who a few times could uh, crack in and actually get past the player uh, around this uh, defense and get in, in, in into the box. But the player that really uh, stood out was Bernadeschi, who had an absolutely amazing game. Also a Champions League uh, debut player, uh, Spinazzola, then actually took the role of Matuidi on the other side, but also played a really, really good. Uh, that was to me surprising and I have to say uh, I have seen too little of Bernadeschi but the, but the few times I've seen him I always thought it was a little bit disappointing. Yesterday uh, he was super convincing. This was a great performance and yeah he's another one of those uh, players that Italy is hoping uh, to get something out. I honestly think the future for Italy looks much better than the recent results I would say. So yeah. That was a great, but you know, there was a lot of playing on the sides for Juventus. The middle of the park was close shut. Um, and it seemed like Atletico looked, at least in the first half, comfortably, but they had to work hard. And I think this is what actually tired them in the end. Um, and then there was the cross coming in from Bernadeschi and Ronaldo smashes it home. Um, I also think that Juan Fran was overmatched uh, a little bit because he never could, whoever was playing against him, never he never could uh, get a hold of uh, that guy. Uh, speak of Ronaldo, uh, the goal was actually the first time after the VAR decision where I consciously was aware that he touched the ball. To me, uh, Ronaldo and Mandzukic were at first totally hanging in the air and very well contained by Atletico Madrid. And I really thought, uh, if Juventus is gonna do, do something, they, yes, we all knew that they will have to rely on Ronaldo and need to get something from their superstar that they bought to win the Champions League. So yeah, um, that was for me, can Juventus get to Ronaldo? Uh, that was kind of the chess match and the first time that they really got to him, he takes the advantage, jumps over everyone and yes, we know he's a freak athlete and it's from a conversation that I had, I, have. I don't think it's all that super clean or whatever uh, for any soccer player at that level. I'm sure, and this is not only Juventus, I think this is everywhere, they take super supplements because with the, the those are well-oiled machines that are working like crazy. Uh, so 
I'm in awe of it, but I know that there's some medical help. Yeah, let's put it that way behind that too. Yeah, and I'm not. This is not only Ronaldo. Let me be clear on that. But I have no illusions that uh, about it. Uh, it's just there's too much money into it to not try. I mean. Uh, Teams at this level try to get an edge at every moment, and it's not always always just tactically. But we can look tactically as well. And I alluded to it. I think that Atletico gets protected with eight men, but maybe were too narrow and gave Juventus too much uh, the sides. And Juventus could get many crosses in that they needed to at first head out. But this gets tiring. It is a whole lot of work for uh, defense. But yeah, it's still only 1-0 at halftime. I mean, Juventus was having ha having a better of, of the game, but I thought that Atletico looked kind of comfortably and, you know, uh, with the confidence also that, yes, we can hold an opponent at bay for 90 minutes. Well, they couldn't. Because right after halftime, I think another Cancela cross in, that Ronaldo again heads towering above everyone. And Jan Oblak seemingly saves, but the goal line technology says nope, this was behind the line. I'm quite certain that wouldn't we have goal line technology, this goal would, would not have been given. I'm absolutely certain, because this was one of those, even if you see it in, in the replay, you don't quite see how this was in, only when you saw the last one. Yes, it was in. Um, and actually, you can fault Oblak a little bit. Yes, he made an outstanding save. I mean that he can get to that ball was outstanding. But look at his footwork. He jumps and then he jumps behind the line and when he's diving, he's actually behind the line. If he stays in front of the line, we're talking a different game. So, um, among others, slight goalkeeping mistake. So, 48 minutes, it's 2-0 and that, uh, that point, uh, game on. Absolutely game on. Uh, real level and at that point I would have expected Atletico Madrid to kind of open it up a little bit it never came the biggest chance was actually right before halftime there was nothing coming Juventus really with the support from from the crowd and Ronaldo did everything and whenever he scored he got the crowd engaged uh, and they completely dominated then Atletico Madrid who just fell, fell apart I think they were crumbling uh, it really this uh, whole game being under under attack uh, getting crosses and then having Ronaldo playing not playing out, out of his mind, but this being this super threat that he is uh, and twice not containing him that took a lot of out of um, Atletico another uh, you know it, it was a game of attrition um, and another one who really worked hard without almost ever seeing the ball was Mandzukic who came off and I and uh, Moiskin came on, the guy who scored two goals uh, in Serie A and on, on the weekend. He had a huge chance already in the 81st first, first minute. This was the only time that uh, you also gotta say that where an Juve um, player was running towards goal uh, without having defenders in front of him. I mean, that was also uh, a move that came a little bit un un unexpected. He just missed it by a little bit and it looked like it's going to go to overtime. But then again, Bernadeschi, who had, a, at least I felt, a little bit of a quiet uh, second half than he had the first half, uh, comes in into the box and is felt by Correa. Uh, pushed from, from, from the back. Pretty clear penalty. Uh, Yes, it's not with the feet, but if you look at it, the way he is uh, being pushed, you cannot help but give a foul here. And then it's a penalty, and Ronaldo, who else steps up, makes it 3-0, and he is the huge hero. And yes, that's exactly what you need from Ronaldo in these cases. I mean, you need him to break down this tight defense. He has the ability, and that's why you got Ronaldo. And so Juventus uh, lives on for another day really gonna be curious about the draw uh, I think no one will want to play really Juventus I have sort of the fear that it will be Juventus Barcelona clash uh, 
which is great for ratings. I mean, Messi against Ronaldo, what more do you want? But on the other side, I think this would put out a great team. Um, the same thing goes actually for Juventus Atleti. I think Atleti, yes, they did not have a great performance yesterday, but in the first leg they had a great performance. Uh, although Juventus could have, should have scored one there too. Um, but yeah, Atletico is not a team that goes out in the round of 16. Uh, they are more, if they make it, they are a quarterfinal level team to me. But yeah, gonna be in, 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 interesting. Um, I also gotta give it to Juventus how they, even when it was 3 0, you know, this is one of those dangerous rounds. Just one shot in and you're out. I hate these uh, things where it on just one goal. You're doing all this great, great work and then one goal and it all turns around. I will always remember, I mean, I didn't watch it back then, uh, but of course it's a famous example in 91 when uh, Kaiserslautern played Barcelona, Barcelona, the dream team for Ander Cruyff. Barcelona won the first leg 2-0 and Kaiserslautern, an absolute crazy performance. Turns it around, makes it 3-0 and then completely dominates Barcelona and then in the last minute Baquero heads it in and all the work that Kaiserslautern did is gone. Uh, I was punching the gut in, in, in addition that meant you're eliminated. Kaiserslautern was eliminated from the competition uh, before even reaching the group stage. But then yeah, Barcelona went on to win it all. I'm not saying Kaiserslautern would have won it all. And now uh, Speaking again of uh, sorry state of affairs, Kaiserslautern now is in the third league, a place where they absolutely do not belong. This is uh, their Bundesliga royalty, but uh, Kaiserslautern is too small of a town. But back to Juventus. Uh, I think no one will want to play Juventus, uh, that's for sure. Um, where do I consider Juventus? I think Juventus, it is so hard to judge. Uh, because in Serie A they really not know how to play good, but yesterday when they needed to pull out a uh, performance, they got better as the game went on and I think um, Allegri outfoxed Simeone in this one. They knew what they had to do um, and he made the right adjustments. I think it was a really well done and maybe Simeone um, got it way too defense defensively. In my opinion, uh, and they couldn't flip the switch any, uh, anymore. Uh, Griezmann and Morata were hanging in the air as well, and you never had the feeling that you that Atletico can sustain possession. They always had to fight for more, fight for more, and then again Juventus is coming with with the ball. Uh, it was a really tough game for uh, Atletico Madrid. So yeah. <sighs> I really am curious to see how Juventus is proceeding. Um, as I said, I don't want them to win Serie A anymore, which they will win, but I wouldn't mind if they win the Champions League. I think they would uh, deserve it. The only thing is, uh, do I want to see Ronaldo get a sixth one and a fourth in a row? That I'm not so sure, sure but not, you know. I've made my peace with Ronaldo on many levels, uh, but on the other side, um, it's a little bit getting to his head, not too much. But, and given all the allegations against him, I'm not so sure how much I'll support all of that. Uh, how, how much I can support him because of that. Uh, and if you heard about it, I'm not sure how innocent he is, as he claims. Well, there is a legal proceedings. We'll see how it will go. Tonight, two more games. They're a little bit anticlimactic, and I'm saying this for Bayern against Liverpool. But the way Bayern is playing and the way Liverpool is playing, I'm sorry, I honestly don't see anything but a Bayern win tonight. Although uh, Bookie says still 50 50. Yes, Liverpool can be da 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 dangerous, but I think that Bayern is that much better. And if Barcelona does not advance, uh, then I don't understand the world anymore. Um, we're already entering crazy territory by having only one Spanish team still in contention and that's a Catalan team so um, we may see how it will go um, three English teams are already on 
and potentially could be four. As I said, I doubt it, but we'll see about it. Let me know what you thought about the game yesterday. Um, I think it was a very interesting, gripping game. I mean, the Champions League uh, knockout stage is there's the best soccer is being played. We don't need to argue about this. It's just uh, awesome to watch. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.